What's up, YouTube? I didn't like that one. I, <clears throat> rewind. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Dustin, and if it's your first time joining me on the channel, well, let's see. I've been here for about nine years. We've got almost 300 uploads. I like bow fishing. I like bow hunting. I like archery. I like chasing critters. I like building stuff with my hands so I can chase critters, and I like showing you how to do it. That's what I'm all about. If you can't go into my channel and find something over 300 uploads that's going to help you be a better sportsman, well... Bye. See ya. When we come back, we're going to talk about shooting a bow fishing bow. And it doesn't have to be one of these funny looking things. It can be any bow fishing bow. And you don't have to have one of these junk things on the front of it. It can be any real setup you like. We're going to talk about what your arrow should look like, whether you're practicing in the yard or shooting on the water. Got a pet peeve. If I go bow fishing with you, and your arrow's not flying good, don't have to be great. If it's not flying good, <laughs> probably gonna take the bow out of your hands and fix it for you. Why do I always say when we come back, I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here, you're here, let's, all right, that's enough. Let's get into it. So, on your bowstring, all right? Now, this is just for a bow fishing bow. Maybe if you shoot fingers on something else, but, on a bow fishing bow and by the way if you're bow fishing you should be shooting fingers take that rest and throw it away if your bow isn't made for shooting fingers well then you're not going to be bow fishing very well all right put it to you that way this is what your string should look like now these are called finger slicks and it's actually nitro fuel line nitro rc fuel line from little remote control race cars, okay? But you can get it, Bow Fishing Extreme, um, Muddy Flats, a couple other places, um, force feed them, okay? You can go and uh, get fuel line. Your knock point, all right? Just grab an arrow here real quick and go up through my restlessness. Your knock point, your brass knock point should go above the knock. The short side fuel line on top should be brought right down to the knock. The finger slicks on the bottom, you want to keep it about an eighth of an inch away from your knock. As your, as your bow's being shot, okay, you see that's just a little loose, like it's not gonna fall off of there, but I can pop it off pretty easily. Um, during the shot, your arrow can walk just a little bit, like a sixteenth or so, just from the string flexing and then it's shooting, all right? And you want it to. You want it to be forgiving to do the same thing every time. If you jam this up in here, okay, I've seen guys jam it up in there like that and, and use them finger slicks that are like as big as your finger. You might as well be holding the bow string like this. You're not going to get good arrow flight. It's not possible, okay? Your knock is so pinched when it's coming off the bowstring. If that bow is not perfectly tuned and your form isn't perfectly consistent every single time, your knock's going to do this one time and it's going to do that the next time, all right? So make your bowstring look like this. For those of you who are running a brass knock above and below, okay, that's fine. I don't prefer that because it kind of tears up my hands a little bit. Um, another thing we should talk about is knock size. Now, depending on where you buy your bow strings, okay, gstringbows.com, you need to be running a smaller size. Lots of bow string manufacturers ship their bows with a brass knock that has a black, okay, uh, piece in the middle now if you don't know if you maybe maybe you can see that um, This brass knock has a baby blue on the inside and it's a number system. Okay. I, I don't know This is one of the smaller ones, right? This is for like really small strand bow strings Then there's a black one and then there's a red one. Okay. They're a lot bigger. Well since they're bigger I don't like them. This is unclamped unclamped. Okay You can see Right now, it's the same size as my finger slicks. 
which means that it won't catch my finger when I'm shooting. Now, when I clamp it down here in just a minute, it gets even smaller. Why I'm moving that so much. Um, another thing that you need to think about during this process is the serving on your string. If your serving isn't tight, all right, and I mean you have to actually push the knock on there, all right, and it should have a positive little snap, all right, just like that. I've got quite a few arrows over there that are actually wore out. You should be able to find that in the dark and pop that on there. If it doesn't pop on there, or if you have ever grabbed a bowstring, and whether it be from lack of hitting the button or you just kind of hit that with your thumb, okay, and that happened, take that arrow, throw it away for the night until you can get a new knock put on it, all right? Because sooner or later, you're gonna dry fire that bow. Now, I've fought it for nights on end because I liked a certain arrow and I didn't want to change. Well, I'm an idiot, all right? Make sure you got a good knock and make sure it has a good positive locking, um, you know, marry to the bowstring. All this will matter and all this will increase your consistency as well as protect your gear, all right? Okay, so to tie all that together, the knock itself could be slightly wore out. The bowstring, all right, and the bow serving, which is this black thread across here, um, it can get wore out. If it looks like it's white and chalky, which this one's beginning to, um, right in here where I shoot hundreds and hundreds of shot a night, um, it will get wore out. You can replace that, all right, that will make your knocks a little tighter. Um, and you can get different diameter servings, all right? Check with your local pro shops, take an arrow with you when you go, all right? And say, look, this is really loose. Um, all of my arrows are like this. I need this replaced and I need it to be a good positive lock, all right? Your pro shop will take care of that for you. Or you can just spend another 35 bucks or so, depending on your model, and get yourself a new bowstring. While we're, how we're going to adjust things today has a lot to do. Hey, how you doing? Has a lot to do with elevation of the knock point, all right? You actually want your arrow, instead of flying perfectly straight, you want it to come off of the rest and fly just slightly knock high, all right? What that's going to do is once it goes into the water, it actually goes into the water. If your arrow is flying perfectly straight, all right, and your reel that's tied to the back of the bowstring is pulling down on it, once it hits the water, it will actually glance, all right? Now, it's not gonna glance, it's not gonna ricochet, but once it goes down into the water, it's going to continue to rise. And you will see your arrow, once you shoot it, it'll go out like that. Like, it'll it'll be a banana in the water. Like, you can't get it to shoot straight. And a lot of that has to do with the height of your knock or the height of your rest, depending on how you have it set up. So, to adjust your knock height. First off, let's look at our rest. Now, on most bows, um, it's going to be slightly lower than normal. You can see the top of my arrow is cutting the burger hole, okay? You see the, the, uh, the bolt that's in my wrist, all right? The, about the top of the arrow, hold this up at eye level, the top of the arrow is in the center of the, uh, the bolt hole on your riser, all right? And you can see how much downward angle I've got. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you a measurement because every bow is going to be different. But looking at this, I'm thinking I'm upwards of about three quarters of an inch, all right, if you need a place to start. Um, I don't, like, I don't start anymore. I just kind of throw things together. I've done it so much, and I look at it, and I say, yep, look good, let's go. 
um, and then I make these adjustments on the fly to my needs. Now, rest-wise, your windage, all right, should be in the center of the riser, all right? That's going to be really, really, really close. If it's not, it's probably a form issue, or you might have a, a outboard that is twisted just a little bit. We can talk about that at another time. But you can see with my arrow on the bowstring, this is very important. Um, you do not want to have everything up here, all right? You don't want to be that angle, but you don't want your bowstring up there either. It's greatly going to um, change the way the bow feels in your hand. As you can see, I'm drawing actually right behind the winch in my hand, all right? I'm pulling the bowstring right behind my hand, and that's greatly going to increase my consistency because all I'm doing, I'm throwing my hand up there and I'm aiming every time, all right? All this stuff will become second nature once you've shot a bow, you know, a few hundred thousand times. But I'm trying to explain how I shoot a bow the way I do. Back to the knock. Once we, you know, kind of got that in the, the okay realm, we can make a lot of adjustments right here. So, once we know the knock size that we're gonna run. We've already looked at the fitment of our arrow knock on our bowstring. Come on, find a pocket. Can't find a pocket. I do not clamp these down, all right? Keep a pair of knocking pliers on your boat. Knocking pliers, Allen wrenches, okay? And a tape measure if you are an Oneida person. Knocking pliers are very important. The reason for that is I can adjust my knock point, right? I don't have to just roll on. Once I set my rest, pretty much leave it. And if you guys are shooting a shelf rest, okay, very, very popular. Boondock Outdoors, how you doing, Jeremiah? I appreciate all that you guys do for bow fishing. Um, G-String, there's a handful of others. Um, that make a either aluminum or a plastic rest for a lot of different bows that is just a dedicated hole for you to slap an arrow up there, okay? But those rests don't give you windage adjustments and they don't give you elevation. So you need to learn how to adjust your bowstring to make your arrow fly better. Okay, here comes the nuts and the bolts of it, folks. By not tightening this down, and this serving, okay, you think how it was wrapped around there, all right? It's just like threads on a bolt. So by leaving this fairly loose, now like I could not push it off with my thumb, okay? Um, and it's not gonna fly off while I'm shooting, but it's loose enough to where I can twist it around the bowstring, all right? And I can use the serving as threads so I can fine tune, micro adjust my knock point elevation. Does that make sense? Let's shoot a few times and I will make some adjustments and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay guys, so you notice that we shot really knock high there. Really trying to keep this in focus and in frame, so bear with me. Um, I believe that uh, my knock point's too high, so all I wanna do is just go ahead and twist this around the bowstring. All right, I'm gonna go just shy of an eighth of an inch there. Um, I'm not gonna clamp it down with my pliers or nothing yet, just leave it loose. Go ahead and, and uh, move my finger slick down there so it stays in one spot for a few shots, and let's try it again. I like that one. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, that's perfect. I like that a lot. All right, guys. From your eye level, from where you're shooting, all right, 
I got the camera adjusted. This is exactly what I was looking at while I was shooting. I'm not worried about where I'm hitting. I'm worried about the angle of the arrow as it goes into the target. All right? Now you can't really do this on all targets. Some bag targets, some layered targets will manipulate the arrow as it goes in. But I've got a big foam block here. It's just gonna go straight in and stick in and it's gonna hold the angle. Um, these arrows spend their life out here on my target. Um, and they're probably not straight anymore. But with the average, everything is in a line, all right? I don't have, I don't have one out here like this. I don't have one kicked up there like that, all right? Obviously, this is an exaggeration. But all four of them being in a line with, you know, some minor discrepancies shows that, A, I'm consistent, all right? If I'm doing my part. And B, having all of the knocks about an inch and a half or so higher than the point of entry based on my line of sight from where I'm shooting, that's what I'm going for, all right? That is exactly what I want when I'm tuning. Now that we've got everything tuned, we'll take one last shot with a, uh, with a line tied to our arrow to double check and make sure. The arrow should fly better with line tied to it, not worse. So, if by chance that we have dropped this down and we've got our arrow flying too straight, by tying line to it on a spinning reel, we'll actually pull that down and the arrow will now go into the target knocked low. That is very, very bad. That is not what you want, all right? So make sure that you're making micro adjustments and check slowly as you go. If you don't have what I have here, I know I can hear people complaining already well I don't have a bunch of arrows that I can cut the points off of and shoot into a target this right here is a interlock pro point the uh, actually I got it winched down with a pair of pliers right now but the pro point has removable barbs interlocks made in the USA they make great bow fishing stuff so go ahead and get you at least a handful of interlock pro points to try next year. You can take the barbs off of them, shoot it during the winter. If the wife will let you shoot your bow fishing bow in the garage, okay? We're practicing at like 12 feet, boys. Get her done, right? So, interlock pro point, another pro tip. Hi, right, boys. I think she's, uh, I think she's shooting pretty fair, I'll tell you what. One more time for the girls. Don't forget to shoot straight, shoot off, and don't forget to wear those personal flotation devices. Smash the like, share with a friend, and I'll see you out on the water.